Hi everyone. So awesome to see such a huge turnout, especially because we have a respected speaker from Pune here, Mr. Neeraj Marathe. So he's a very good friend of ours, and he has generously agreed to walk us through a very interesting venture that he's now become a part of. So I'll just give a brief introduction about Neeraj. Uh, most of you might already know him as the investment biker slash Twitter personality. and also a research analyst uh, through sentinel research his research service but before that he has also been a good friend i think one of the first introductions to investing when i had when i started my career was through reading neeraj's blog and i don't know why he stopped writing that blog but it was a very interesting blog he used to write about special situations a very intriguing micro cap small cap company which uh, he calls what is the name you use for that uh, companies where you get stuck and cannot get out Oh, the Chakraview, Chakraview stocks. Abhi manju investing, yeah. So Chakraview stocks, which he was very famous for at that time, but very interesting to learn from him. And I'm glad I'm his friend now, and I've learned a lot from him throughout the years. Uh, he's also part of the uh, Flame Invest uh, Investment Labs uh, core team, who organizes the events and speaker sessions and lecture series at Flame University. And in his current avatar, Neeraj Marathe is a promoter and director. of a co-working space business called bootstart so neeraj over to you and thank you for coming all the way from pune thank you thank you so much thank you so much uh, to the entire ppfs team for this uh, opportunity uh, of course i'll not be talking about the company bootstart uh, i'll just brief you about what i'm talking about uh, i never thought i'll be called to speak anywhere as a industry person but uh, here i am uh, it's a bit intimidating to talk in front of uh, analysts and investors like you uh, most of you know businesses more than the promoters themselves because when the company gives a bad result you guys get to say that the company has underperformed not that you are wrong so uh, it's it's been fun so as uh, all of you guys say uh, i am here to add a bit of color to the coworking sector so without much uh, uh, further ado let me start so let me start by congratulating myself on a good set of numbers like all of you say so i have been waiting to crack that joke for a long time but <laughs> that is okay okay on a serious note now uh, let me just go through what uh, i i would like to share with you guys Uh, so what is the objective of uh, this entire talk uh, what can you gain out of it and uh, you know how can this help you so the objective is basically to explain this particular sector which is called as co-working flexible uh, office spaces by a variety of names it's relatively a new sector uh, some of you might have uh, seen a different avatar of this way back maybe two decades ago and all uh, in something called as business centers right so now it's a bit different but the sector the companies operating in this sector have come into its form come into its own uh, more uh, so over the last a decade or so so it's a relatively young sector right so uh, all the more necessary to study because you'll soon have uh, ipos of companies from this sector uh, the the largest company in the sector in india which is awfis office they have already filed their drhp and they'll be coming out with ipo soon uh there will be other companies also which will follow so all the more better to know a bit about this sector uh, it is something actionable it is something okay from a investing point of view also so the objective here is to uh, just brief you about how this sector works how this business works and what are the pointers for you as analysts and investors which you should regard while studying companies belonging to this sector of uh, as all of you know i mean i make fun i made fun of analysts but i am an analyst myself uh, so i am a sebi uh, uh, a sebi registered analyst i am also interested party because recently i took uh, i did my first unlisted investment uh, i took stake in a unlisted uh, company which is from this sector it's a pune based company called as bootstart uh, i am now involved actively with the uh, with the day to day running of the company as well trying to strategically change direction of the company uh, expand a bit and uh, you know whatever over the period of whatever years i have been in the market we have studied and read about good companies their good practices what are good promoters 
just trying to apply those things over here to make a hopefully a better business out of this so that way i am a interested party in this obviously there is no reco no marketing i'll not be talking about our company which is bootstart i will not be talking about what we are doing how great we are etc etc i'll not be talking about that okay it's strictly about the sector so let us just understand this particular concept uh, which is co-working because it's something which is new for a lot of you uh, some of you might have seen it some of you might not have okay simply put a co-working space is basically a commercial real estate which has been usually taken on lease by a operator and it will be split into parts and it will be let out to actual users by the operating company right in co-working there are four different types of business models so let me just explain these formats and models so there is something called as pure co-working space there is something called as built to suit there is something called as managed office and there is something called as virtual office so what are these things now a co-working space is for example a operator like let's say we work or a operator like awfis office they will take a large commercial space on the rent or on lease right they will retrofit it completely they will uh, uh, do all the furniture fittings you know they will air conditioning proper uh, air condition it properly they'll install good lighting they'll maybe have a a, a good pantry or kitchen uh, some good amenities etc etc and over there different people can come and work right so they can book a seat they can book it on a daily basis on a weekly basis on a monthly or a yearly basis so that is co-working where different entities it may be a individual it may be a small team different entities will come together and they will work together so they may not be connected to each other that is pure co-working right then you have what something called as built to suit so for example if this is the space which is hired there is a large team which comes as a client and this large team let's say is a is a startup and they tell the operator the we work kind of a guy that we would like to have 20 seats but we want a section carved out out of the entire space let's say which is access control okay we want is it uh, to be done in our way where we want two small cabins we want a conference room also so this is something which is built to suit where in the co-working space there will be a section which will be carved out and that section will be dedicated to a company so it is not co-working per se in that area right so that is something called as built to suit then there is something called as a managed office a managed office is basically uh, uh, when a entire center or an entire space is taken up by a single company right so as a co-working operator i will have only one client that one client is taking up the entire commercial space so there is no co-working it will be only that company which will be working in there from a operator perspective this kind of a arrangement is a dream arrangement because we will always have 100% occupancy we have properly understood and we have properly defined back to back arrangements because we have certain rent to give but we will have certain income stream which is proper right so this is something called as managed office so this is something which most of the operators will want okay this is the cream of the business which is managed office because this obviously these will work at 100% occupancy so there is no co working involved it's a single entity which takes up the entire center and this is something new which has come up which is a virtual office a virtual office is one in which a client may not physically be present at the office space always okay but the operator which is the co working company it will provide a lot of necessary office services for that client so for example answering calls forwarding calls to the client you know accepting the mail of the client etc etc all this is officially there but the main reason why virtual office is done is to get gst number right so a lot of clients want to have gst registration for that they do not have a office to show without that you don't get gst registration right so a lot of clients take up space in co-working companies in terms of a virtual office so that they can get a gst number for themselves so this is something which is new which has come up from a operator perspective this is good business right so that is the different formats in which the co-working industry works right so you will most of you will recognize this okay most of you will know a bit about this but this is something which is the cream okay this is something which uh, so for example we work does this for pwc right i, I think or e and y, either of the two there are a lot of big mnc so we have a, a a small office which is taken over by which is uh, 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 there for a italian company a mnc they have the entire office we just manage it they don't want any hassle they just want to come and work 
right? So that is something which is a managed space. And virtual office is something which is new. This is an extremely high ROC business for the operator. Extremely high. We get to charge a lot. Okay, so this is also something new which has come. In this, virtually everything which is there in the top line, close to the bottom line. There is virtually no kharcha. So it is something which is a very good uh, part of the business. Anybody has any questions, please do ask. No. So let's just understand the parties involved in this particular sector or business. There is obviously the landlord who is the owner of the commercial property, right? So a lot of times the landlord may be a professional investor who will have a, a entire portfolio of various commercial properties and he'll lease and rent out it to different entities. That there's an operator, which is a co-working company like us. Most of the, I'm not saying all, most of the co-working operators, companies like we work, like, uh, you know, office, most of them do not own any of the properties. Okay, most of them will prefer an asset light business model where they will take the commercial real estate uh, uh, on, on, on lease and give it, uh, you know, retrofit it properly, do all the furniture and fittings and give it on some lease. So those are the operators. Obviously clients, so the clients are of a variety of types. I'll just cover which types of companies uh, uh, come, but broadly in co-working, the majority of the client, uh, about 40% of all India's co-working clients are IT, ITES, okay, followed by financial companies. And there are a lot of market data and research, data research companies which come. There are some services companies also which are there. So there are architects which take up the space. There are creative designers which take up the space. So there's a variety of things, right? And this is something which, which you might not know, but this is a very, very important part of the entire sector, which is brokers or the IPCs. Okay, IPC is independent property consultant. So you have companies like CBRE, you have companies like JLL, you have companies like Cushman. Okay, these large brokers, okay, they are extremely important. <clears throat> they are extremely important from this perspective. So for example, tomorrow, if let's say Google, Google wants to establish an office in Pune. How can they do so? Will employees of Google USA come to Pune, roam around the city, try to find good office space? Right? That's practically not doable. So they will appoint, let's say, a CBRE or they will appoint a JLL. Our requirement is such and such. We need a grade A commercial building, which has all fire audit, you know, which is uh, uh, some type of green rating under ESG and all which comes. We want to have it in this area. We want to have proximity towards residential hubs. Please go and find a place for us. CBRE then will do all their scouting and they will find a particular space for them. This is done by all these IPCs and brokers. Right? <clears throat> now, if Google wants to do a managed office, this IPC and broker or broker, the IPCs, will approach an operator saying that, boss, we have a client. They have such and such requirement. Would you be interested in running the place? For this, they take heavy brokerage. Okay, it is a cream business. So if ever you get a chance to invest in a co-working operator like us versus a IPC, please invest only in the IPC. Okay, it is an extremely high margin. So they take two and three months rent as brokerage. It is a very, very expensive affair for us, for the co-working operators. But they have the leads, right? They have the MNC connects. They have the large corporate connects. So... It is only they who can bring us clients. Right? So these are the, in the ecosystem, these are the different types of parties which are involved. Now, within this format, there are certain things which are very different. Okay, you will see, but these are type of formats which are not scalable. For example, uh, there are a couple of co-working spaces in India. So for example, in, uh, if I remember right, in Ahmedabad or Surat, some one place, there's one co-working space which is only dedicated for various types of painters. So the entire space is made up where you no know, painters can come and paint in peace. It's all creative, etc, etc. Okay, but it does not make business sense because occupancy is not very high. There are a uh, you know, few co-working spaces which are dedicated for, don't laugh, uh, it's there in a few foreign countries, which are dedicated for making Instagram reels. Okay, which are dedicated for doing podcasts. There are such places, right? So, uh, in Pune, there is one space which is dedicated for making advertisements. So, they'll have a green screen. They will have, because you need to do some effects. They will have the best of the equipment. They will have cameras and everything. You just come there and shoot your ad. Finished. 
right so but these are not scalable so for a lot of people this becomes like a hobby so you no know, some guy will have his own com- own commercial uh, space mujhe kuch different karna hai he will start it right but that works because he doesn't have to pay rent okay that's it is not something which is scalable you will see a few and uh, uh, you know far between kind of spare different co-working spaces like this but it's not something which is scalable but this is the broad format in which the entire industry operates so in india uh, as i was mentioning earlier it is a relatively new industry so ites is the largest followed by services and finance uh, so the organized part of the uh, co-working sector is growing very fast in the last uh, uh, over the last one decade the cagr since 2016 is actually 34% in the area under management uh, almost 90% plus of the industry which is growing like this is completely under the lease model so not under own model so co-working operators take the space on lease and they uh, 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 let it out to their clients as a sub lease so that is how it does so in india there are over 400 operators and top 10 control over 60% of the market uh, i'm talking 60% of the number of seats is what they control right so it's fairly uh, not exactly like a very concentrated industry it's fairly uh, well distributed in that sense tier 1 cities and tier 2 cities are fairly large uh, tier 1 cities have more than 1250 centers and 0.9 million seats and 60 million, million square feet under management and tier 2 cities uh, this is part of the organized so there will be a few unorganized ones uh, which we are not counted so just to let you know what is tier 1 and tier 2 so this is tier 1 uh, the source is uh, the awfis ka drhp for this so tier 1 cities if you will see in india the largest in terms of uh, co-working space is bangalore which is which has got more than 320 centers bangalore is 32% of the entire supply of co-working spaces in the country so it's the largest market okay so that is bangalore obviously it's the startup capital of india uh, no so it it will be that way right so bangalore is the largest uh, which is followed by other cities uh, no surprisingly uh, pune is also quite large in that but nowhere near bangalore but it's a upcoming city there is a lot of growth interestingly happening in the tier 2 cities as well okay so uh, so we are for example we have a center in nagpur and it is 100% occupied now we are scouting for a new place in nagpur so it's very surprising that uh, in the tier 2 tier 3 cities also co-working as a concept is picking up very very fast right we'll we'll just have a few pointers as to why people are preferring this so why does co-working work right so what is so beneficial about this that this industry is growing so fast and is scaling up so fast right so let's just understand so what are the benefits from the various uh, uh, entities point of view right so let's just look at those so to a landlord what are the benefits that this particular so a landlord who has a commercial property very simply he can just give it out on rent to somebody versus he can give it out on rent to a co-working operator right so what are the benefits if he gives it out on rent to a co-working operator so these are the benefits he will always have to deal with a single client right which is a co-working space so imagine somebody has a 25000 square feet commercial property right it's a big uh, commercial complex a building in which a floor is 25000 square feet it's very difficult for the client to let this out to one uh, entity as a office right so you'll have to kind of split it into parts and rent it out to various companies so in this case he'll have to deal with multiple clients if he gives it out to a co-working company he will have to deal with just one client right there's always professional level of engagement which is involved because the co-working operator will be very interested in the longevity and continuity of the uh, entire arrangement so it is not something where he'll have to haggle with multiple people at all the time and uh, he'll have to take up a lot of hassles right so for the landlord also it's a relatively hassle free kind of a arrangement so there will be always continuity so even if one client comes and one client goes it is the headache of the co-working operator to ensure that new clients come and occupancy is maintained the landlord does not have to go out and hunt for a uh, different clients to fill up the space it improves saleability okay so we have seen this in a couple of cases where our landlords have come and thanked us because uh, we kind of specialize uh, a bit or rather we look out for distressed property cases 
सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल थोड़ा रोड के फ्रंटेज से अंदर प्रॉपर्टी है वो जल्दी से जाता नहीं है राइट सो देन दो दैट प्रॉपर्टी इज लाइंग एम टी फॉर क्वाइट सम टाइम ना इफ द लैंड लॉर्ड वॉन्ट्स टू सेल दैट ओके कमर्शियल प्रॉपर्टी सेलिंग अ एम टी प्रॉपर्टी इज अ बिट डिफिकल्ट वर्सेज अ प्रॉपर्टी विच इज ऑक्यूपाइड सो वी स्टार्ट अ कोवर्किंग ऑपरेशन ओवर देयर वी आर एबल टू फिल इट अप इट इम्प्रूव द सेलेबिलिटी ऑफ दैट फॉर द लैंड लॉर्ड सो नाउ अ ऑक्यूपाइड स्पेस विच इज जनरेटिंग इनकम इज मच मोर सेलेबल वर्सेज अ एम टी बेर शेल स्पेस राइट सो फॉर द लैंड लॉर्ड इट्स अ वेरी बिग बेनिफिट एंड देर आर अ वराइटी ऑफ इनोवेटिव मॉडल्स इन दिस राइट सो इट मे नॉट बी जस्ट प्लेन मैनिला रेंट देर आर डिफरेंट मॉडल्स विच विल डिस्कस विच इज रेवेन्यू शेयरिंग विच इज प्रॉफिट शेयरिंग वराइटी ऑफ मॉडल्स आर देर देर आर लैंड लॉर्ड्स पार्टिसिपेटेड इन द इक्विटी ऑफ द को वर्किंग ऑपरेटर राइट सो देर आर वराइटी ऑफ मॉडल्स वेर द लैंड लॉर्ड कैन सिग्निफिकेंटली इम्प्रूव इज यील्ड सो इन आवर इन आवर एक्सपीरियंस एंड आवर वर्किंग इट शोज दैट फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन पुणे uh if you consider grade b property the commercial real estate yield is somewhere in most of the areas again it will differ but somewhere around 5 and 1/2% is at max what you can get but if a co-working operator comes into play and the landlord is not after fixed rental then the landlord's yield at a 85 90% occupancy can go up to 8% right so it can give because of the various innovative models in which the rent or the sharing can happen it is something which is a very very big improvement in the income for the landlord so these are very beneficial things for the landlord so it is something which is you know in his interest to do to the client the company or the companies which will come to work in the co-working space this offers a lot of benefit first and foremost obviously no operational hassles right you don't have to look at cleanliness of the place right you don't have to appoint somebody as a admin you don't have to worry about whether electricity bills internet bills are paid on time you don't have to worry about repairing a table chair ka wheel toot gaya you just don't have to worry about anything you have to just come and work right co-working operators will do all these things also provide free tea and coffee right uh, they will also provide a pantry place they will also provide a conference room where certain number of hours are there they can have conference we also have a audio visual room where it can be used for doing long long distance calling in hd everything so all these things are provided by the operator right so operational hassles are just not there right second is high flexibility so if for example if you are a company who has started today with let's say 5 employees okay now one year down the line how many employees will you have you just don't know right so you might have 50 employees or you might be reduced to one employee who is the founder you just don't know so in in this case for example how will you go and take a office space there is no way that so but if you get into a co-working kind of a or a managed office kind of a situation today you are booking 3 seats or you today you are booking 5 seats you can let the operator know that from next month i'll need 25 so you have that flexibility right maybe next year you will need 50 so just to give you an example uh, you have heard of this one one card the credit card thing which comes so this one credit card thing it started in bootstart Okay, with three employees. Okay, they scaled to one twenty employees. Everything in bootstrap. Okay, then they got funding. They bought a building and they moved out. But from three to one twenty, the scale up happened like this, which is not possible in a traditional office environment. Where how will you scale up, right? अपने एक let's say you take a small space as your office. You're going to go and search the neighbor वाला. So there's no flexibility if you are you know uh, 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 having your own space. whereas in a co-working in a carved out area you can have more you can have less you can the operator will make sure that he uh, 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 you know properly accommodates your needs so scalability is also very high right so tomorrow if uh, from 3 to 300 you have to do the flexibility the scalability the both the things are extremely useful and these cannot be done in a traditional office format whereas if you go into co-working these things help a lot and most importantly it is highly cost effective it is highly cost effective because of two reasons number one because it is our business the co-working operator can very effectively negotiate rental terms with the landlords whereas if a third party company comes to negotiate which is not their business the, the landlord will manage to charge a higher rent second and most important there is no upfront furniture fittings ka expense furniture fitting is a very high expense okay we'll discuss the Uh, exact numbers later 
but it is a very very big expense so our calculations show that if you know versus going in a traditional office renting out a office and starting work there versus doing it in a co-working up to 18% to 20% is the reduction in cost if the same client comes to work in a uh, in a environment of a, uh, of a co-working space right so which are the clients which will not come where there is some very high confidentiality kind of needs so there are certain it companies uh, whose client <coughs> who is let's say in the us and all they demand certain security measures which a co-working space cannot provide in some cases so those will never come but otherwise for everybody else the co-working space is a very very better and viable option to come and work out what are the benefits to the operator of the co-working space majority of the cases it is asset light as i'll uh, just try to explain to you later the requirement of capital in this can be very minimal if the business is done right it's a very interesting business model where it can be quite a uh, 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 highly roc accretive secondly it is highly scalable right it is just uh, limited by the kind of contacts that you have it is kind of limited by the amount of uh, uh, occupancy that you can get but it is extremely scalable you can have good margin and roc i'll just explain that with the numbers how you know what can work over there and again there are variety of innovative models where you can engage with the landlord to do things in a different way which are beneficial for you which are high roc for you anybody has any questions please do ask i'll show <clears throat> so what are the various ways in which this entire thing works so there will be a commercial space okay so either this commercial space will be operated by an operator where it will be taken on a rental basis from the owner or sometimes it will be owned by the operator right so it uh, a vwork may own a particular building where they are operating their co-working space or they may take it from rent okay so both of the models a very interesting thing is coming up which for some reason nobody has explored which is kind of own okay so uh, very simply put uh, what can be done is have a very large reits kind of a structure where a party can raise funds like a reit it can be a category 2 aif where you can raise a lot of funds build a commercial property portfolio okay with prior arrangement with a co-working operator and give it on a fixed lease to a co-working space so usme the yield can be much higher at least a percentage point 150 bips higher okay or 1 to 1.5 percent higher than what the current rates are offering okay so for some reason nobody has done that but uh, a bangalore based company tried doing that so co-working company called as beehive but instead of this reit wala thing they went into this uh, i don't know if you know the concept of fractional ownership uh they tried that so that for some reason uh, for a variety of reasons didn't work out but this is a very interesting model where you can have or you can raise money in one vehicle build a commercial real estate portfolio which will always be rent, uh, rented out to this co-working operator okay, so you have a fixed rental your investors over there who want exposure to commercial real estate can get a good yield right and this co-working company has good visibility of how much rental is going to be there with proper escalation etc etc that will be built in so this is kind of own where it will not be actually owned by the operator the space will be owned in some other vehicle with a you know with a with a tie up with the operator that can be a very good scalable and a business model which will have long uh, a good amount of longevity right so i hope somebody will do that right so because it's uh, it's a win win situation kind of thing for a lot of companies now in rental how does the rental car a uh, business takes place so there are some spaces where the landlord does not have the money to furnish the place those are called as bare shell so the landlord will give the space to the co-working operator on a as is basis pura khali pada hai so over there the obviously the rental will be lower so the landlord gives it to the co-working operator as a bare shell so the co-working operator has to do all the kharcha he has to do all the expenditure spurs up the place do all the furniture fitting ac lighting carpet or tiles everything right so that is up to the co-working operator to do 
when the landlord gives it bare shell. The rental here is obviously lower. There is something called as warm shell. Warm shell is a half-made space. So a warm shell will be a place where all the flooring is proper, the lighting is proper, air conditioning is in what, uh, installed, right? So that will be a warm shell place. Where then now the landlord, uh, where now the operator has to just spend in properly designing the entire space so that it can accommodate various types of teams, right? So over here the rent is a bit higher, and fitted out is where the rent is the highest, where the landlord will do all the expenditure to do the entire furniture and fitting. So for example, in case of our uh, company, uh, we have two, three of our centers where the landlord has done all the, so the fittings and all will be done by our vendors, but they will be paid for by the landlord. So we will give him higher rent. So for us, lesser capital is involved. Okay, for the landlord, it's a good yield. For us, the scalability becomes higher because then we can use that capital to put in the new center, right? So that's how the entire thing works. So this is again, different types of uh, of business models that are there. If you start analyzing companies, if you talk to managements of these companies, you can just ask them that, you know, what kind of model do you follow? There are some business models, which is a, a, a hybrid kind of thing where the landlord and the operator will share the expenditure. So that is a negotiated kind of thing, but that is how it broadly works. So over here, this is something which is, uh, uh, which has been a source of discomfort for a lot of people that this is akin to what in finance we call as the asset liability mismatch, where here you are taking something on long-term lease as an operator and you are giving these to other people on a short-term lease, right? So what happens if uh, the commercial real estate collapses? This long-term lease, my rentals, which I pay to the landlord are fixed and I'm giving it out on short-term lease. So this is something which the operator has to judiciously manage that if my view is that over the next, let's say five years, over the next six years, which is a medium term kind of thing, commercial real estate is not going to go anywhere. Then I should think what kind of lease period will I do? Will I do a longer term lease or will I want to lock in myself for a shorter term? Typically today, co-working operators take a place, take a commercial property on lease from the landlords, typically for a five to seven year period, which is extendable by another five years that is there in the contract itself, right? Usually there is a lock-in of two to three years after which either party can break this contract with a six month notice. That is how the usually the industry uh, practice is. This is also very important because this makes the business really attractive. So as a co-working operator, when I rent the place out from the landlord, I have to pay him certain deposit, right? The point is, we as operators, we also take deposit from our clients. So a client who is doing a contract with us for 12 to 18 months, so they want to be at our place, they have booked our place for 12 to 18 months, we take three months deposit from them. For somebody who is signing up for three years, we take up to six months deposit from them. So more often than not, the deposit that we take from the clients ends up being more than what we pay to the landlord. So again, it becomes a, a, a negative a working capital kind of a situation, right? So more often than not, this happens. So this becomes a very attractive feature for the industry. The amount of capital you need to involve there is lower, right? So this is something which makes it quite attractive. Landlords will take rent in three different forms. One is obviously plain manila rent, which is fixed every month. Some landlords take a percentage of revenue as rent and some landlords at least in our case, we, have, we don't have any, where some landlords are okay with taking percentage of profit. Most of the landlords feel that as a co-working operator, we can manipulate this figure very well, show less profit and share less profit with them. So nobody wants profit. Okay. Everybody is still, even most of the operate, uh, most of the landlords are not okay with percentage of revenue also. Unke dimang mein mera jaga, mera fix bada is what they have in mind. Right. So most of them are plain vanilla, but now more and more people are opening up. So we actually have to do a Excel kind of a table to show them that plain rent itna aega. At 70% occupancy, aapko itna rent milega if you go under percentage of revenue. Okay, so revenue sharing arrangement. Uh, so some people are opening up to that idea. Now in this certain terms, if you are studying companies are very, very necessary to know. Okay. First and foremost, this is highly negotiated. Okay, so 
it depends on what kind of negotiations we are able to do with the landlord so there is no fixed kind of thing so the better negotiating power uh, a party has the better arrangement he will get there is a concept of minimum guarantee that you should know for example even if the landlord does percentage of revenue there is a minimum rental that is always put in the contract so it may be let's say the landlord has agreed to 40% revenue sharing so 40% of the revenue will be shared with the landlord but there is a minimum guarantee also subject to minimum rent of this so even if there is 0% occupancy there is zero revenue the co-working company still has to pay landlord that minimum rent which is at a lower it is also highly negotiated this is also a very important thing that you should know whenever a co-working operator takes a space from the landlord on rent the landlord gives the operator a rent free period that is also negotiated rent free period is given so that the co-working operator gets time to furnish the place properly and bit of time to fill it up so in our case the average rent free period that we have managed to get is 4 months so we have about 45 days to complete the entire space and roughly you know 80 odd days more to get in clients to build up occupancy tab tak humko usko rent nahi dena hai right now this is something which you should study if a company is let's say coming out with ipo or if a company is uh, uh, for example uh, coming into the market for raising funds because what me as a operator what i can do is because this is highly negotiated what i can do is i can go to my landlord let's say i want to uh, uh, take up a new place which is a very large commercial center i can go to the landlord and i can tell him that i want a 10 month rent free period theek okay? hai and next year onwards i will pay much higher rate to compensate you okay now if i want to raise funds my financials will look really good because one center of last center of mine no rent is going right now so there is no loss which is being shown so my financials can look really good right so these numbers can be adjusted very very well so if you are studying any company these are things that you should understand that is that company having any center which has a extended rent free period is so you will find this in terms of matrices so simple thing you can do is try to calculate everything per seat per seat revenue per seat rental you all all of you know common size statement right do something like that over there suddenly something is changing where for some reason per seat rental is dropping suddenly it means that there is some rent free period involved so that is something you can question the management try to get better answers get more color and uh, try to uh, analyze the company accordingly right so this is something which happens in the sector what are the key value drivers if you are analyzing any company in this sector what are the things that you should look at first and foremost the key value driver which affects the profitability as well as the occupancy of the company is this area type of building and format adopted right so whenever any good co-working company so we also whenever we want to uh, uh, we are thinking of putting up a, a new place in a new area we do a micro market study that broadly what is the composition of people who live there right what kind of uh, uh, income patterns do they have are there a lot of professionals because those are the ones who will really want co-working more right so this is very important which area surprisingly it's very interesting the two largest micro markets in india for co-working are in bangalore one is i think sanjay nagar a second name i forgot third is in pune which is baner right so these micro markets are what drive the market right so this is something which is very very important which kind of area type of building so there are grade a properties grade b so you know something like uh, dlf commercial is uh, 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 real estate D- dlf panchil are all grade a properties right so there is a grading which happens so grade a properties are the most sought after but they are also the most expensive okay so it, it's a choice right so somebody like we work will always go for grade a properties because we work has global connects they have got great mnc clients right so we are extremely stingy as a policy we don't go for grade a property at all we will go for grade b property which is in the proximity of the grade a property okay so uh, the rent is cheaper uh, our bargaining power with the landlord is much more so i mean i can't imagine going and sitting in front of uh, dlf ka vp and bargaining rent 
it's just not possible right so they'll be like boss the, the door is over there so it is not possible so for us it is so that again it will define so if i am let's say highly ambitious and i like a dlf co i'll be agreeing whatever the terms are there i mean it's a huge risk that i'm taking because i'll be paying a bomb as rental if i'm unable to you know fill the space it can drag down my entire company so what kind of area what kind of building what kind of format i'm adopting is going to drive the performance of my company so this is something to be studied in whatever company that you are studying this is another thing which is very important negotiations and relationships with landlords right so what kind of relationships are you able to establish with landlords what kind of negotiations it becomes extremely important simple things like you know landlord ka uh, the the rent has to go on the specific date that is going to go on the specific date you can't delay a single day over there landlord has to be left at you know left in peace that these are good clients we would like to continue because otherwise the landlord is not going to continue with you later right so this is another big value driver which is a intangible kind of thing this is very important because the large clients are brought in by ipcs by all these large commercial real estate brokers so the relationship you share with them is very very critical they have to be paid their brokerage on time even though they charge a bomb but they have to be paid it on time because they it's worth the brokerage that they charge they bring in large clients which will sign long term arrangements with with the co-working operator so it is very very important this mix is very important right so for example if your entire clientele is skewed towards only it it's a big risk that you are running because tomorrow if something happens to the sector your occupancy is going to go for a toss so this mix every good co-working company has to disclose rather should i would say has to should disclose the kind of mix of clientele that they will have okay so it should not be like 80% it yes it is not it's a big risk for the player then it has to be a good mix of different industries <clears throat> good co-working companies also will disclose the average contract period with the client so are the clients more short term in nature or have they signed long term ag- uh, ar- agreements with the co-working operator that is also disclosed occupancy obviously there will be a break even occupancy that we as a company have a certain matrix in which we try to fit if that does not fit we will not go for the space right so that is another interesting thing capex and cost is something i will discuss because there is a lot of interesting things that can happen here now this is something uh, which new co-working we are not able to do it yet because we are too small but i have seen good co-working companies uh, even weaver and awfis is making good use of technology so for example a uh, a uh, office will tie up with let's say infosys saying that boss aapke no in whatever city that you are we also have our centers right we will provide you a certain access to our app in which your hr team can design ki aapke kitne log hamare coworking centers mein kahan kahan pe baith sakte hai it is flexible aaj baitho kal mat baitho pay as you you know are you as you are occupy so with technology this is something which is becoming very very convenient even for larger players right so it is something which is a a good flexibility kind of thing provided and obviously how is the growth being achieved right so there are companies which uh, really go after growth top line growth is all they want right we had we work also which was going in that phase where they were highly funded because of this they were just chasing top line growth okay there are other companies so for example we are a bit old school we believe in cash flow and profitability right so i will be okay sacrificing some growth if it is not associated with profitability so what is the entire nature of the co-working operator is because see you can have very high growth if you are properly funded i can grow 100% per year easy even on larger base it is very easy but then profitability will be uh, sacrificed right so this mix of profitability versus growth is this balance is very very important so whenever you are studying any co-working business few of them will come out with ipo soon these are the things that you should study now let's talk numbers okay so how do you analyze so for the analyst uh, in you how do you analyze a co-working space now when we are talking about a co-working space when you are trying to uh, let's say build a model okay or when you are trying to calculate the profitability what kind of thumb rules can you use typically 
what is the size of the co-working space versus how much seats can it occupy per seat you can take between 30 to 35 square feet carpet as a thumb rule okay i am always defining everything by carpet because different commercial spaces have different loading percentages so the sellable in some cases there will be 35 percent loading in some there will be 50 percent loading right so the sellable area for the same carpet can be different so i'm just that's why taking it as carpet so if let's say there is a space which is uh, let's say 9000 square feet carpet right so that space can occupy roughly 300 people okay uh, that space can uh, accommodate sorry roughly 300 people okay at between 30 to 35 this varies depending upon what kind of amenities is the operator providing so there will be some operators so we as a, a company we provide a good pantry a good place to sit and eat right but we'll not provide a gaming room will not provide a pool table will not provide all these things but there are some which provide all this okay we'll have a good conference room and all that we'll have but we'll not have these other things which are instagramable okay so we don't do that okay so uh, if a operator is providing those things then all that vacant vacant space which is used for these amenities is loaded on this so this can go up to 40 45 square feet per seat also right so that is a a, a matrix which you have to fit so whenever a new property comes we have our inbuilt sheets where we just want to know the size of the property we immediately come to know what is the highest possible rent we can offer to the landlord negotiations can be done properly and so this is one thumb rule that you can use 30 to 35 square feet carpet is the size for one seat on an average so as i said it depends on the amenities and facilities now what is the capex cost okay this is very very important because it changes massively and there is a lot of unethical things which happen in this okay so capex cost usually is between you know for us roughly it is around 20 to 50 rupees per square feet carpet for a bare shell now this can be from about 1500 rupees which is the lowest that i know to infinity okay you can have anything so you know a we work will have this huge you no know, 15 20 lakh rupees ka chandelier when you come in i don't understand why okay but they have so their cost will be much higher so over here if you have co-working spaces where the carpet is less than 6000 square feet it is not viable okay because below that you cannot have a pantry or anything you will just have a co-working space right below that the size of toilet is also so small because you have to fit number of people right so there's this critical size iske niche hoga hi nahi you will see awfis will not take any space which is below 20000 square feet you will see we work not take any space which is below 30 35000 square feet right so if there is somebody who wants to target 5000 square feet ka it is not viable it will not earn money okay we don't do anything below 9000 square feet but we do it below 20000 for the simple reason that the smaller spaces which are 10000 12000 uh, plate uh, square feet the bigger players are not interested okay so we get some better negotiated terms we are too small so we have to do these things but this is something which you should remember if it is too small that is not a sustainable business okay this is something which is very important so this is something which if there is a huge divergence from this in the capex there is some tocha being done this is the thumb rule in terms of where if there is 100 rupees being spent on capex on the furniture and fitting this is the proportion in which things will be there typically if there is a large divergence of course if let's say somebody is using local company ac versus somebody is, else is using you know mitsubishi ka ac is very high end there will be a difference okay but if there is a huge divergence in this there is a problem you know you can't have painting cost to be 20% i mean it's just not possible you can't have it to be very high than this right so this is based on our experience and me talking with a lot of other players in the industry also right so from your analysis angle if there is a huge divergence in any of this it is a problem so huge divergence from this number huge divergence from the construct of this number in this proportion if there are large divergences from this from the you know the analytical analyst point of view it is something which you should question ki ye kaise hua so you can actually question kaun sa ac liya ek room ke liye kitne ac lage ek space ke liye kitne ac lage fir itna itna cost kaisa hua it's very easy to understand if there is large divergence from these split 
numbers. Some more numbers and revenue streams. So you'll see different co-working companies follow different ways in which revenue is obtained. Obviously, the main thing comes from the rental, which is the co-working operator will take a certain rental from the client. That is one revenue stream. Some have started this as a very viable option, right? So some co-working space have actually tied up with hospitality companies where interesting healthy dishes, they'll have live, you know, chefs doing live cooking in the co-working space and all. This is also now starting because they earn good F&B revenue. F&B can be a higher margin business. In these spaces, uh, you know, in the common areas, you can have live counters where you can sell things at a decent markup. So this becomes a very good earning kind of activity for them. Parking is a big, big, again, uh, uh, you'll see in metros, typically co-working spaces for a car. Anybody works in co-working space over here? Car parking ka kitna hota hai usually? It, it will be, you know, in excess of 6,000 rupees per car parking per month in metros. In smaller towns, it will be lower. But this again becomes a good source of, of uh, revenue for the co-working space. And some co-working spaces also provide certain value-added services, right? So for example, a co-working space will provide a client with, uh, so let's say, client ka koi income tax filing karna hai. So the co-working space operator, the center manager, will have all the contacts which the management provides. Kya aap ye CA ke saath karo, ye CA hamare dusre co-working space mein kaam karta hai. He, so they try to build a community like this, where value-added services can come automatically. Co-working uh, spaces will conduct various types of events, right? So for example, let's say that a co-working company has uh, a client who is into fashion designing. The co-working company can hold an event where they'll tell that fashion company, uh, design company that aapka sub designs, you know, we will conduct an event for you. We'll give you free space. Aap apna design se karo, we'll invite all our co-working uh, clients, but you pay us this, this fee. You can have an exhibition, right? You will have ready-made audience who is young, who is vibrant, who will be interested in your designs, right? So these kind of value-added services, building a community, all these kind of things also give revenue to the co-working operator. Again, this will change, but it is again a pro pharma. What can be the numbers of a co-working space? So this is for a fitted out property, okay, where in a fitted out property, the rental cost will be higher. For a bare shell property, rental cost will be lower. Depreciation will be higher. Now, this also now goes under depreciation because of the lease accounting policy, where you have to amortize now, longer term leases and all. But I'll not get into that. I just wanted to tell you this. If 100 rupees of sales is being done, then rental is 45. So this is where a efficient, these are the numbers of an efficient co-working uh, player. Now, the make or break happens in two areas specifically. One is the rental cost. Second is the other expense. This becomes very important because yeah, pay all the repairs, all the, uh, what can I say, all the compromises done during CapEx, they will come within the next six months as large expenses, right? So if, for example, you wonder why WeWork went the way they did. In WeWork's case, this was 73 Okay, so for the sake of growth, they signed uh, leases with landlords at any terms. The rental cost was 73% of their revenue. No way they can earn money. It is not possible. In our view, if for a fitted out property, the rental goes beyond 48%, it's very difficult to make money. Very difficult to make money, right? So this is again a pro forma. This is what the numbers of an efficient co-working operator should look like. Obviously, it will change depending on the kind of format that is adopted. But by and large, a 18% PBIT is very, very possible in this particular sector. Okay, And it is something which is very, very uh, 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 asset light, very less capital intensive. So it can be highly scalable also. Right? So it is a, a very good uh, kind of a model if executed Now, what are the risks involved in this business? So obviously, real estate risks are there. 
This is something which is very important. There is a perceived ALM kind of mismatch about this sector in the minds of investors, which is fair, right? That you are taking long term, you are lending out short term. So then a co-working operator has to have that view about what is going to happen to real. So for example, if somebody is thinking that this industry, okay, now with the advent of technology, how many of you think that the IT, ITS, headcount industry, the growth is going to get stunted? I'm talking about headcount industry, right? So basically you hire 100 heads, you bill them to the foreign clients, so the billable employees and all. The headcount business, which is there in IT. How many of you think that growth is not going to come now in the headcount business, which is the kind of, not the, exactly the bottom of the pyramid, but which is a very uh, commodity kind of business within the IT sector. So if you think that this headcount business, the growth is going to stall, the headcount industry in IT is not going to be like what it had you know, was earlier. If you have noticed that, if I remember right, Wipro has had four or five continuous quarters of negative hiring. I, I don't know if you have, right? So it's actually shrinking. If this industry is not going to grow in terms of number of employees, the industry will grow in terms of revenue and all of hoga, right? But number of employees, the headcount, the occupancy of commercial real estate, what will happen? Demand for headcount in the why will there be a large increase in demand for the commercial real estate? So if the commercial real estate is in your view, jo abhi boom chal rahe, if that is the view taken, then me as an operator, I have to strategically then do what? I have to reduce the length of my leases with the landlords. Right? I cannot afford to have 5 and 7 year leases. I'll have to bring it down to 3. With understanding with the landlord that 3 ke baad, it will be again renegotiated. But if somebody is not taking these kind of steps, if that view is not there, then there is a strategic error. Right? So again, this risk involved where if you do not have a view on the commercial real estate industry and the direction in which it is going, then your business strategy may not be aligned with that and you are going to suffer. What will end up happening is, you have to continue paying the high committed rentals to the landlord, but your clients are going to pay less money because competition is offering it at less. Competition operators, because the real estate, commercial real estate has gone down, they are offering it at less. So you are going to have a loss kind of situation. So this is something which is a risk which has to uh, completely, uh, uh, which has to be completely taken cognizance of. This is another risk, right? So, occupancy and dependent on dependence on large clients and IPCs. So, uh, there are two listed companies in this space. One is EFC. Second is a SME IPO which came called as Contour. K O N T O R. Uh, Contour is a Thane based company. They run a good business. But one of their centers, which is a very large center, is a managed office, which is a single client, right? Or tomorrow, for whatever reason, what happens, right? So this. Large client pay dependence is a big issue. So that client mix, size of client, whenever you are understanding a particular company in this space, it is something you should lab. This is a very big risk because what is happening is a few IPCs are becoming operators themselves. Independent property consultants, they have contacts of landlords who come to them ki yaar hamara property rent out karwao. They have contact of clients who are coming to them saying ki we want such and such kind of office. Now the IPCs themselves get into co-working as a business. They themselves start becoming operators. They are trying it on a kind of pilot basis. They can absolutely uh, blow the competition away. So if they are able to succeed in this, it is a very, very big risk because they will own the entire value chain. Right? So it is a very big risk from that angle. So you'll see strategically see, you know, you ask operators, how much of your business comes from IPCs? Has it been going up or going down? Operators are now relying lesser on IPCs because IPCs may soon become their competitors. So they have to develop their own sales team. right? So that is something which is very essential. Execution and service is always obviously there. From the analyst point of view, the risk that you have to look at is obviously the first part. So the first is that the numbers may not be representative and this is very important. You need to get good data in buckets of the particular uh, co-working company that you know what kind of size of the client what is the 
contract period average of a client all these things are very very necessary to get right so these are a few risks in that uh, angle uh yeah so by and large that was it which i wanted to explain i just didn't want to give a lot of industry gyan i just wanted to have something which can be actionable for you from an analyst perspective and an investor perspective as well this is a industry which if executed well can be highly scalable it doesn't require a huge amount of capital can be highly sticky as well okay and it can be a uh, you know from a asset owner perspective this industry can be a uh, can give a very good leg up to the kind of yields that the commercial real estate owners can have so if there are any other questions that you might have uh, please thank you so much neeraj have it It was a fantastic presentation. Thanks for all the details. Now, if anybody has an, any questions in the audience, please raise your hands. We'll come with a mic. Hi, uh, thanks. Thanks for the wonderful presentation. Most welcome. So, it is an asset light business. Uh, a lot of the competitive advantages I could narrow down was essentially relationship and knowledge yeah. of micro market. Yeah. So, what? is a barrier to entry in this business why can't this 400 number tomorrow be 1000 or why can't the note of ipc is just become uh, you know yeah so to answer your question very bluntly this is a commodity business there is no entry barrier okay that is the blunt answer to this question what differentiates people is basically the kind of service they are able to offer so you will be very surprised that there are you know certain co-working spaces where the chairs are not proper the carpet stinks the bathrooms are not clean Oh, you will take these things as for granted, but this kind of services are not offered. Second thing, what kind of relationship is a, a, a the co-working uh, uh, operator able to establish with his clients? So, for example, in Bootstart, four months ago, I started something called as Bootstart Events, right? So we had a Diwali celebration where all clients from different companies they came together to celebrate. We had Christmas. Okay, we are doing a Bootstart Cricket League where different companies will have their own team. i am pushing for a bring your kid to work day where the clients can bring their kids ki yaar papa ka office kidhar hai mummy ka office kidhar hai so that connect you know it with the client becomes important if we are able to do that then it will be sticky otherwise it will always be a price conscious market right so over there then 300 rupya per seat extra dena pad raha hai but i am comfortable here clients don't mind otherwise there is a zero entry barrier in this okay the only entry barrier that can be there is the efficiency with which a uh, existing player can do capex as well as his understanding of what kind of terms should be signed with the landlord a new player coming in may agree to something crazy do some crazy capex and go bankrupt uh, in pune also i have seen so many co-working companies go bankrupt because they didn't sign proper terms and their capex cost went haywire right so the kind of uh, uh, the kind of ambiance that you bring in right so if you go on twitter i just posted some photos of one of our co-working it's a very cheerful you know it will be nice full of light it will be very cheerful we went to another co-working space it was like pura claustrophobic you no know, it was there were golden and red colors used on the glass there had a bright uh, blue carpet so it was like a bar you know i was like boss anup jalota ka gana kidhar hai so i mean over there you will not like to work right so these are very simple things but you will be surprised that otherwise the blunt answer is there's no entry barrier it's a highly commoditized business it's a commodity absolutely thank you <laughs> neeraj hey are baap yeah uh are there any uh, branding or network effects here so uh, question is let's say awfis has yeah. presence in 50 cities in india versus some yeah. other operator operating only in one city now if uh infosys or you mentioned infosys with the app and all that uh if you can offer more locations or more diversity does that result in some pricing power or uh better unit economics that was one question yeah so what i have seen in our experience at least the network effect has played out if you are operating internationally so a lot of mnc clients so for example uh let's say e and y will by default go with vivo they will not even want to see anything globally you know we work and globally e and y ka connect hai india mein e and y ka office we work mein hi chalu hoga so those network effects come into place for the operator which give them very good uh, leverage they get you know it gives them the premium client now these are the clients that me as a co-working operator will be dreaming of 
that these will be like they will sign a five year contract right so the network effect play, has played out there where you are able to have these connects internationally across mncs in case of local clients i have not seen that uh, to a great extent because if you see the it companies they don't have offices in a huge number of cities right uh, secondly uh, for it companies uh, it es they by and large the larger companies are very much set and used to set up a new center so they know how to efficiently set up a center how to manage cost of capex they know all this so when a hybrid kind of thing is being tried what office does for uh, for a, a infosys or a wipro or a tcs we cannot do we don't have that tech stack okay but they can do it but again the uh, the extent or the uh, size of that is very small compared to their overall size so abhi tak to nothing like that has really happened i i don't envision that happening on a larger size sure uh, the other question is based on the presentation and the advantages uh, you mentioned sure uh, one of the biggest advantage that i saw is flexibility where you don't have visioning on how many employees yeah. will be there 12 months out yeah. the other advantage is that uh, you can uh, eliminate the admin staff and things like that and the disadvantage is obvious uh, your profit is an expense for the company which Absolutely. they could save if they were doing it in house yeah uh, at a stage where employee base is stable and predictability comes in i would expect an erstwhile a uh, co-working occupier to go and move out move out yeah. like you mentioned that one car yeah. uh, eventually got their own yeah. uh, uh, place so is it somewhere linked with the startup formation and things like that so if in an environment where startup formation comes down the uh, co-working yeah environment suffers yeah yeah, yeah. so if startups take a hit the overall industry the occupancy will take a hit no question about it which is why the mix is very important so it's not just about uh, the cost for some it is very important that uh, or other a thing which takes precedence is they are able to do things seamlessly so you know a company which wants to set up uh, a base in let's say a particular city they don't want to go around scouting for properties or haggling with landlords they are they don't want to you know in that particular city कोई तो वेंडर देखो इंटीरियर वाला देखो उससे बनाओ सौ चीजें वो मैं लफड़ा कर देगा नो दे डोंट वांट टू डू दिस थिंग दे जस्ट वांट टू सिट कम इन सिट एंड वर्क सो फॉर देम इवन इफ दे कैलकुलेटेड द कॉस्ट फॉर देम इज एनी वे लोअर राइट देन द रेंटल पार्ट इफ यू ऑल्सो कंसिडर द अपॉर्चुनिटी कॉस्ट ऑफ द कैपेक्स बिकॉज द कैपेक्स इज द इज समथिंग दैट द क्लाइंट विल नॉट डू अप फ्रंट यू विल हैव टू डू इट राइट सो टिपिकली लेट से इफ इट्स a 10000 square feet kind of a of a space a uh, carpet then the uh, if a particular client does it he'll, in my view have to spend upwards of 3 and 1/2 to 4 crores on fitting it up if we do it we are able to do it at roughly 2 and 1/2 crores so not only is our uh, uh, cost lower but they don't have to invest money upfront also so for these reasons it is not just about predictability and uh, you know stability of the client but co-working genuinely provides them with some very good uh, advantages uh, it is highly cost effective as well so it does if for example the problem which happens is if mentally a client beyond a certain point wants to tell that boss hamara office hai he, so for example in a co-working we give them branding also so if they are going to do a car out kind of section we will do the branding for them also that this is their section unka branding pura hai but if beyond a point it is a matter of pride for the client or anything like that that we don't want to work out of a co-working then he may move out but it is not for tangible reasons not for cost reasons definitely not thanks uh thanks neeraj for the presentation oh yeah hi sorry i just have one question can you share some benchmark metrics on occupancy average length of contract and uh, average sure so uh, average length of contract for the overall industry today uh up to you not know, between 12 and 18 months the contracts uh, they are somewhere around 50 55% of the total contracts so this is as per all these details are there in the office uh, uh, prospectus cbri has done a detailed study right uh 3 years plus are a bit lower 
but those are the three years and upwards. Uh, those are the clients that you want to look at. Uh, those will be somewhere in the region of 25-28%. And remaining are one year and below, which will be individuals who are co-working and you know, they will want to uh, shift places sometimes for a change and all these kind of things. It uh, Average occupancy today is somewhere around, if I remember right, somewhere around 72 odd percent for this is also considering managed offices huh? because managed office ka hamesha 100% over. So the blended one is for the industry somewhere around 72%. Uh, you have to obviously ask companies about their break-even. So for us in our metrics, if it fits that the break-even is somewhere between 55 to 60% ke beech mein occupancy, then we will be going for that property, otherwise we will not. So we target that kind of break-even. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, so I have two questions. One is, uh, if the operator size is not very large, hmm. then uh, the lease period for him and lease period that he lets out to others, hmm. there could be a mismatch. Okay. So how do you know? How do you see that happening? Because you get a managed client, and you may not get a lease beyond three years. Then what will you? So again, it these managed client deals are back to back. I am getting a managed client, which is why I will scout a place for him. It will not be the case that I kuch to khol ke betha ho. No, but if it is hybrid, then hybrid as in means uh, your three floor. Yeah. Uh, huh. So first or uh, top two floors or one floor is a managed office. Yeah, we actually have something like that. Yeah. And rest is uh, all mixed. Absolutely. Yeah. So there, you know, managed client says that I want it for five years. Yeah. You have locked up for three years plus two years. Yeah. Plus after three years, either your landlord is, you know, quirky or he wants more land. Rent. Can happen, yeah. So it is all negotiation based. So all these things are done seamlessly by negotiating properly, informing the client as well as the landlord. So it's a seamless kind of thing. So agar teen saal ka ye hai, lock in. After that, two years are there. We will not wake up, you know, two years, 11 month ke time pe. Ki, Are, abhi to khatam ho hai, abhi bhago landlord se pucho, client se pucho. These things are done seamlessly, well in advance. So, a proper, even if let's say the landlord says ki meko nahi dena hai, the client notes properly, much more in advance, that this space is not going to continue for us. In in such cases, abhi tak to hamare saath hua nahi but if it happens, it is my priority that I will help my client find somebody else. He may be a competitor. I am okay with that. But the client should be okay. No, he should not suffer. I will help the client find a good space somewhere else. I will negotiate with my competitor for my client also. I will be very okay doing that if it happens. But the client will not be suffering. That I will I'll always want to take. And second question is, my brother sits in a co-working place. Ah, yeah. Okay, so he, he initially he was all charmed and probably he got it uh, during uh, COVID period. Yeah. He got it really cheap Yeah, with uh, minimum parking charges and all. Yeah. So he was telling me, come come to my office and I will, you know, do networking. I will do this, I will do that. Look at my canteen, look at my carom board and all that. Yeah. Abhi usko do saal ho gaya hai. Do saal ke baad uska saara utar gaya hai. Kyunki now uska networking ho raha hai. Rent uska bada ke hai. Itna ho gaya hai. Ki wo alag agar office usse bada lega. He is sitting in one cabin. Three people sitting in one cabin. Yeah. He is spending 75,000 rupees. Wow. Okay. So, I told him it's not making sense for you. Now he is paying that rent only because he got into habit. Yeah, yeah. So, that habit is going to go away today or tomorrow. Possible, yeah. Because rents are increasing. 100%. Okay, we work used to give a desk, free desk in 12,500 rupees. Now we work is, we work Malad. He is charging something like 17,500. And cabin not below 30,000. Yes. Okay. So his cost is going up, he's not getting benefit of networking, so-called networking. So, how do you see this kind of client staying with co-working? Yeah, so again, if my, I have a client coming in 
to play carom or if i have a client coming in because uh, you know there is a, a, a great ambience or something he is not going to stick finally so it has been our observation that wo pool table hai uh, you know uh, some kind of a gaming room rakha hai uh, you know you have foosball and all these things it's been our observation that wo uh, do mahina teen mahina chalega uske baad koi dikhta bhi nahi hai usko people finally want to come and work in a very good environment so चर्न इज वेरी हाई right so which is why so for any coworking you will see that the individual clients don't make up more than 12 to 15% of the total right so the chunk is uh, teams the chunk are companies so if see problem kya hota hai na for the pure play coworking the floating seats which are there floating seats will never have never have 100% occupancy so if my coworking center is going to have 50% as floating seats it is not affordable for me so i'll never keep more than uh, you know uh, uh, 12 to 15 percent as floating seats. The rest of all will be booked out. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, quite an enlightening one. Uh, the question that I had is that out of the uh, different workspaces that you had, you mentioned about the virtual office space. Yeah. Where the client does not actually occupy a space. Yeah. In that case, what is the limit of uh, what is the number of clients that you can have in this space? Is so, there is there anything which you have a number or it's so if you are thinking of you know what happens in the gym where I mean people jada to donation dete gym pay the membership so it cannot happen yeah yeah so it cannot happen because even though the client may not physically occupy a seat is uh, uh, allocated to him so it will always be vacant but the seat rahega he can come any time and the space is occupied yeah yeah the seat is allocated to the client virtual office does not mean that uh, it's like in the air right the client may not come uh, the operator will handle a lot of office requirement for the client sometimes he may come also but a seat will be occupied i mean uh, sorry allocated for him right so it will not be a kind of i get what you are thinking that you no know, 100 seat ke office mein 200 client ho sakte hai kya no because you mentioned that the it's a it's a most uh, desired model that yeah, yeah. Uh, a cooperator and yeah. so because maybe the cost element is less absolutely so since you so the cost basically in terms of the overheads you mean which yeah, yeah. Overheads. overheads second thing is if for example in this case for example if let's say a uh, one seat on a floating basis i am charging let's say 10000 bucks for a virtual office same thing i'll charge 25 because we are going to do his gst registration we are going to do all the gst returns for him we are going to do all the mail pick up telephone answering for him which is not a very big expense for us but we get a lot more what thank you hi sure yeah hi um fascinating presentation neeraj uh, i'm just trying to zoom out a little now sure and uh, trying to understand uh, what are the higher level so we understand i understand it's a commodity at the end of the day but what are the higher level trends for example um you know is it large companies wanting to move to a opex model rather than capex and therefore preferring coworking or is it uh, you know smaller companies or smes which start off as say running in a coworking and once they gain scale then they can think of moving into an office is that a trend um again uh, you know you know uh, i mean how do you uh, there is a long term work from home trend which is i'm guessing going to gain credence so how does that impact so how do you see so where is the supply actually in the long term sustainable supply going to come from for this industry yeah uh, i mean that's a fair question and there are certain trends but again uh, the trends can change very fast right? so currently what we are seeing is uh, a lot of people who were work from home earlier they are now preferring something which is they themselves are preferring something hybrid ki ghar pe itna kaam hota nahi hai etc etc all these kind of things so they themselves are preferring something hybrid now a lot of larger companies also Uh, for example if let's say i have a large i am a large it company i was occupying two floors of a 
कमर्शियल बिल्डिंग ये कोविड के चक्कर में मैंने एक फ्लोर सरेंडर कर दिया नाउ आई वॉन्ट टू डू अब्रिड थिंग वेर अबाउट फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ वन फ्लोर उतना नंबर ऑफ सीट्स आई विल बुक इन को वर्किंग वेर इट इज़ वेरी वेरी कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव फॉर मी ऑल्सो एंड देन माई एम्प्लॉयज यू नो इन इन सर्क्यूलर फैशन दे कैन गो देर एंड वर्क नो आई कैन हैव अ डेडिकेटेड सर्वर लाइन वी ऑल्सो प्रोवाइड दोज काइंड ऑफ सर्विसेज वेर विल हैव अ फायर वॉल सर्वर लाइन फॉर अ पर्टिकुलर क्लाइंट Uh, exclusively and all these kind of things. So all these kind. So that is one trend which is which is upcoming, which is a hybrid kind of thing where clients are preferring that. So that is one thing. Second thing, what we are looking at is a lot of. Uh, uh, so I was talking about networking, right? So a lot of these tech startups, which are young guys. So we are seeing, uh, you know, AI driven uh, business models, AI AI related companies start working co-working more because they don't want to sit in some office and. and do work they want to be in between people they want to interact with people they want to be in a vibrant environment right so new age business models or new age businesses and all are preferring to work out of co-working space it's very cost effective as well so that is definitely but again as i told you this can change very fast managed office is very important you will see uh, one of the largest indian it company have their entire amdabad center as a managed office they are not doing it on their own there's a co-working company will be which will be doing that as a managed office is the first that they are doing so you spoke about startup just a quick follow up uh, do you see these once they get scale and time do they move out of their own or do, are they comfortable just working in most of them have been comfortable working because wo scalability unko aa jata hai uh, so we are see we have seen a startup convert themselves to a managed office that yahan pe co-working mein kaam rehte rehte abhi humko pura chahiye so we have seen that happen but broadly they are they continue but somebody wants their own building and all wo baat alag hai because they want to show otherwise uh, see what we have often seen is the the businesses or the business models where there are there is no heavy front end reliance on trying to show something to the client etc those are always comfortable working in co-working spaces always but jahan pe bahut shosha karna padta hai wahan pe at a particular point of time they will want to have their own office their own branding where they want to impress the hell out of a client that way thank you yeah sure so thank you very much for a great presentation um i have a question so there are people who are like reits they are making money by building commercial office and renting them out right and you are a smart operator who is going to i'll you know to for lack of any better word i'll say you are going to a dumb operator a dumb owner who doesn't know uh, how to deliver the same services as yeah. you are delivering so you are going to him and renting out the space right now the reed kind of people they are building or sometimes they are leveraging they are borrowing and renting out and typically rent rental yields could be 8 to 9% which escalate every 5 years yeah so i would assume that if you are going to similar guys maybe you are you know you have to find one odd of office which you are able to get at 5 5 and 1/2 6% rental yield but typically you know in a market 7 8% plus escalations every year you will end up at a very high cost of rent so why not you uh own the property you you uh, buy the office from the same dumb Absolute. owner who doesn't know how to run his building you buy it and leverage it you borrow from the bank at least your interest co- costs are uh, fixed for a long you know let's say 5 or 8 years and then That's you run it properly so the market will be, if market is willing to buy there are enough number of investors who are willing to buy reit units absolutely They'll prefer to invest in you uh, because you are even you know enhance the rental yields and increase the return on investment yeah. right the risk of renting for 5 years and you know running your business is once you uh, popularize the location yeah okay it becomes great you have invested in the capex 5 years later the landlord says i don't want to renew the lease yeah i want my own property yeah. right and in india i have seen umpteen numbers of people who think they can do somebody else's business so the guy will be thinking that you know you are making 
two and a half times revenue from the same property. So he'll be watching you for three, four years and say, I will not renew your lease. I will start running this same business. Yeah. So you have invested, you have uh, gathered clients and five years later, you are not able to renew the lease, right? Yeah. So you are in a soup. Your business, you find you will find something else. But you have done all the uh, donkey work for the landlord. You have made that location popular and he could probably become your competitor, right? Possible. So do you think this makes sense, owning a property, borrowing and then running it as a more stable business? So again, thank you for calling me a smart operator. It's very nice of you. But I don't consider landlords as dumb. Uh, so I will never call any landlord dumb. Uh, they are the people from whom you know we get our raw material. So always for me, there is a high amount of respect for the landlord. In fact, there are cases. So for example, in so we have a very very nice charming commercial bungalow property in Pune. The landlords are senior citizens. Okay. So uh, pura hamara, uh, deed karte vakt, I sat with them and explained that boss, isme ye clause dalo, isme ye mat dalo. Because finally they are senior citizens, right? So even if technically they are dumb, we have high amount of respect for our landlords. We will never consider them dumb or if they appear to be dumb, I will be the first person to educate them because I want longevity. Right? So I am extremely aligned with the landlord. I will be always ensuring that I want to make money but not at his cost. Right? I am very clear about that. So the relationship, that's why in one of the sites, the relationship with the landlord is very important. The day I start calling my landlords as dumb is the day my business is going. So that's not the main point. The main point is you rented some property, popularized it. Capex banaya, sab kuch sahi kar diya. Paat saal baad wo renew nahi karta hai. So that's a big risk, no? That is the big risk, but that is the main point. Because if my relationship with my landlord is such that he has benefited out of it, right? The chances of him renewing the entire thing are much higher. Second thing, if, for example, I am doing all the furniture fitting, okay? One aspect of it. Second aspect, if the landlord has done all the furniture fitting, he has spent an X amount of money on that. He cannot afford to have the property vacant for 5-6 months. If he takes it back to for himself and want to do something with it himself, it does not fit in the matrix. He will not be wanting to do that. There is no reason to do that. We are paying him a fair rent. So usually it does not happen. That is one. If we are doing the capex, okay, in this case, if this first case was landlord doing that. If we are doing the capex, and the landlord asks us to vacate. We will go with everything. We will go with our ACs. We will go with our tables. We will go with our chairs. We will go with our fans if they are there. We will go with our light fittings. It will be like a bare shell for the landlord. Usko refurbish karne mein, you will take a decent amount of time. Which again is zero in rental for him. Zero income for him. So it again is a question of whether he would want to do it. Right? Now if I have an attitude that my landlord is dumb. If I am dumb enough to call my landlord as dumb landlord, then these things can happen because I will always have some kind of a conflict with the landlord. But if I am working with the landlord, right? that is what we try to do. I, we are working with our landlords. We are trying to explain them that kya hota hai, kya nahi. If we have a revenue sharing agreement, we share our GST return with our landlord. That, sachi mein hamara itna revenue tha, ye aapka percentage hai. If that level of comfort is there with the landlord, usually we have found people to be reasonable. So, for them, they will be sometimes greedy. right? So, that is fine. Uh, if we are able to do that, no problem. Uh, if not, we will walk away. There's, we are also very open to walking away. There is no problem. Because in that same area or locality, I will find another place. But for the landlord to refurbish the entire thing, find another client and try to... So, just imagine this. I have got a 25,000 square feet property. Five years, I have been on lease. Now I suddenly have this motion. In theory, this is right that the landlord can suddenly switch. But who will take it? Will it be easy for anybody to find? If it is a the furniture fitting is done by us, I will leave it as a bare shell. Uske baad, the landlord has to spend. If he is not going to spend, he has to find somebody who takes a 25,000 square feet property as bare shell. It's not at all easy. He will spend many months trying to find somebody. Landlords also know this. 
So in theory, what you are saying is a risk. In practice, if relationships are maintained properly, it usually does not happen. Right? We have to be humble. We have to treat our landlords with respect. And you know, it usually will not be the case that they will want to dump us just to get some more money because it's financially also a loss for them. So the relationship is usually continuing. It unless you know we have seen one or two cases where the landlord is in a financial mess where he has to sell the property and all. Tab hota hai. But otherwise, it's usually been a so we still have, have you know bootstart was started in two thousand seventeen. Uh, I I took my stake like last year. We still have our first property even today. The landlord is still continuing with us. He has been through us uh, uh, with us through COVID, where we could not. I mean, I was not there in the company that time, but but where rent could not be paid for two three months. Relationship matters. Thank you, most welcome, sir. Whenever things got rough. I always remember what my father used to say. Running a business does test a man, my son. There are ups and downs, glorious highs, and sometimes a low that leaves you feeling defeated. The character of a man and the character of a business are not very different, are they? Yes, but when the chips are down, we must stand up. Dust ourselves off and motor on. Volatility—it's a funny thing. It makes you question yourself and wonder if you've made all the right decisions. Sure, you can question some of your decisions, but stay steadfast on your goals. Dad always said, "There are no shortcuts and no quick profits. There are no free lunches, are there?" There is only one right way. At PPFS, we think like Rahul and his father. That volatility is a fact of running a business, and buying equity shares is like owning a part of that business. We use value investing principles to manage your money. This means we invest in the right businesses at reasonable prices and for a longer term. PPFS Mutual Fund. There's only one right way. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.